Hello, sweet Renew family. We love y'all so much. We hope you're safe and warm inside your home today and doing well. We miss you very much and hate that we can't be in person with you, but um, we are praying for all of you that aren't feeling well and that you'll feel well soon. Um, and if there's anything that we can do, we ask that you please reach out to us and we will do anything in our power to help you feel better. Um, and just know that we are praying for you for sure. So a couple of announcements for today. Uh, we do have our Wednesday night Bible study have started back up. And so I think this week we've got the Thorntons down um, and we'll see how everybody's feeling in their house. And if we need to make adjustments, we will definitely send out a text to everybody. But we're doing the Bob Goff study, Love Does. This is one of our favorite books. It's kind of what introduced us to Bob Goff. And it is an amazing book. He's got a really good series, video series that goes along with it. And we enjoyed doing Everybody Always so much that we thought that we would do Love Does. And so I think you'll really enjoy that. So that'll be on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. And uh, I think we've got everybody signed up all the way into February. So that's really good. And we always have dinner with that. So please join us. And then I also wanted to tell you that I called Laura's Tea Room this week. And we have a date set to go have a little Galentine time at Laura's Tea Room in Ridgeway um, on February the 12th. That's a Saturday. I know that's Valentine's weekend, but I think it'll be really fun for us just to go and just enjoy some time together to have fun. They say it's an amazing experience. I've never been. Katie Thornton has been and she really enjoyed it and she kind of brought this idea up. So I think it'll be really fun. So it is $41.99 per person. Um, that's children if you're bringing your girls with you. Um, but the church will pay $10 for each person that goes. So that takes it down. And that's with tax and gratuity. That's everything included. Um, and it's three courses. It's hand-dipped strawberries. And they said it's a really cool experience. So I'm excited to do that with y'all. But we do need to make sure you have we have a commitment from everybody um, so that I can make a reservation for how many are going to go. So if you can try to bring your money by next Sunday, and then we'll hang on to that and then we'll pay when we get there. But we just want to make sure we've got a commitment so that I can, you know, we're going to take up the majority of their room. So we want to make sure that they don't lose out on business. So they need to know a head count. Um, so while the girls are doing that, the guys, uh, Corlin and Mike Burring, have been so gracious to offer their home to go and have some BB shooting and some airsoft guns. They're going to set some targets up in their backyard um, and... Lugoff, and so that'll be really fun. They live off Latchcott Road, so not very far from the church, and um, they've got, you know, a great backyard and some land, and so that'll be a fun time for the guys to go and hang out and do some BB guns and airsoft shooting um, and just hang out and fellowship together while we're off at our ladies' tea. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. There's some fun things coming up for us um, in this coming year, so it's going to be good. So um, I think that's all the announcements I have, and we just want again just to tell you that we love you, and I hope you enjoy the sermon, and y'all have a good rest of your Sunday. See you later. Good morning, guys. It is Sunday morning, and normally we'd be meeting in person, but there's a lot of people that are not feeling well, and also we have this weather you know, going on outside, and we just wanted everybody to stay safe and stay warm and not try to get out in this mess. Uh, but we miss you guys, and we can't wait to be back together again next week. Um, but at least we get to do things this way. Um, so I did want to share some stuff with you. So I've kind of been thinking about it all week and praying about it. And there's this one particular story in the Bible that I really wanted to share with you, and you're probably familiar with it. And if you haven't read it, it's a very easy read. Um, it's in the New Testament, and it's called Philemon. And it's literally one page, but it's a lot packed into this one page, and I just found it so, um, I don't know, in-depth, I guess. Um, so I encourage you to read it. Uh, I'm not going to read all of it, even though I probably could, um, but I'd like to talk about it a little bit first. I'm just going to read this one part. It says, For this reason, although I have great boldness in Christ to command you to do what is right, I appeal to you, instead, of this basis, on, instead on this basis of love, I, Paul, as an elderly man now, also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, appealed to you for my son, Onesimus. All right, so in this story is about a man who was a slave. Now, obviously, slavery is not a good thing. And regardless of how you feel about it, the Bible is kind of clear on that topic, at least in this um, passage, right? We get a clear understanding of how God feels about it because uh, 
first of all, Philemon is a bishop in um, the early church. He would have been in Colossae. So that's where we got our the book of Colossians from. So he would have been, they would have had a house church and it would have been at his home. So Onesimus would have been a slave there. And for whatever reason, he didn't want to be there. I, don't, I can't imagine what was going on. I would hope that Philemon didn't um, treat him unjustly. However, who would want to be a slave? Now in those times, you know, it was a different culture. Some people actually were slaves for a lot of different reasons. And in this particular case, he leaves and he steals from Philemon and runs away. Somewhere on his journey, he meets the Apostle Paul. And we read in the story that they're met in chains, so probably somewhere in jail. Um, and so the Apostle Paul actually gets to share the gospel with him, and it changes his life. And he becomes a brother to the Apostle Paul. Well, when Paul finds out who he is, he tells him, look, you need to go back to Philemon and make things right. I would rather you stay with me um, and help me as we spread the gospel and do God's work, but it's only right for you to go back where you came from and make things right um, with Philemon. So I want you to take that, you know, think, think for a second how this must have been for him. You know, he's already left Philemon um, and he didn't leave in a good way. Um, he stole from him and abandoned him. Um, so I'm sure he was afraid to go back because the person that Philemon knew no longer existed. He was a changed man now. And But why would Philemon believe that? All he would have known was the man that left. And for us, what does that mean? You know, sometimes we're in all kinds of bondage to all different types of things. And it always seems like the easiest way is just to get out and no matter the cost and what it hurts or does to anybody else. But we see in this story, that's not the right way. You know, God will open that door and good did come out of this but we shouldn't leave in that way and hurt other people on the way out. Wait for our opportunity for God opens that door for us to find that new journey. And that's the right way to do things. We don't ever want to burn those bridges because we can be both people in every person's story. Sometimes we're the hero, sometimes we're the villain. And it even talks about different seasons in this chapter. He says, you know, in that season of life, he may have been that man to you. But in this season of life, trust me, he's a changed man. And he even goes through and he says, listen, Regardless of how you felt about him before, trust he's not that person anymore. He may not have been value to you, valuable to you before, but I promise you he is valuable to you now. So people can change regardless of your past, your circumstances, where you are in life. Um, know this, it's just a portion of your story that's still playing out. Um, so I encourage you to think about that, whether you be the Philemon in the story or the Onesimus, right? Now, regardless of what you think about that, he did leave. He did go out on his own. Um, he tried to run away. He tried to do it the only way he may have known how, even though I think that if, he, if, the, if the church was really happening there, I think there would have been change on its own. But he meets the Apostle Paul. I mean, of all the people he could have met, the Apostle Paul who wrote the majority of the New Testament, um, that's pretty incredible. So he has to go back to Philemon, right? But Paul says, listen, I'm going to send you with something to help you, right? Because I love you. So he goes back and he says, listen, take this letter with you. And this letter is from Paul to Philemon, right? And it's beautiful. He says, I appeal to you instead on the basis of love. He says, I am sending him back to you. And now he is useful both to you and me. I am sending him back to you as a part of myself. I wanted to keep him with me. So that in my imprisonment in the gospel, he might serve me in your place. But I did not want to do anything without your consent so that your good deed might not be out of obligation, but out of your own free will. For perhaps this is why he was separated from you for a brief time so that you might get him back permanently. No longer a slave, but more than a slave, a dearly beloved brother. So he walks back in. I mean, I can imagine Philemon says, you know what? I can't believe you had the guts to come back after everything you did to me. And then he hands him that letter from the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Paul reads it out loud and he hears him say, look, he's not that man anymore. And I want you to understand something too. He's no longer, I don't want you to treat him like a slave, but like a brother. And he goes on to say, treat him like he was 
me. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. Not like a slave, not like the man you knew, not, the, not like the man you probably didn't like, not like the thief, not like the slave, but like a brother. That's pretty incredible. So he goes back with that letter. And so Philemon has a change too, because he realizes this was not the right position in life for him either, right? So if you consider me a partner, accept him as you would me. And if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this letter with my own hand. I will repay it, not to mention to you that you owe me more even of your own self. Yes, yes, brother. May I have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh me in Christ since I am confident of your obedience. I am writing to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. But meanwhile, also prepare a guest room for me for hope that through your prayers, I will be restored to you. So Apostle Paul says, listen, put him up in the room you put me in because one day I hope to come see you again too. And I believe this is a story of redemption for us all. Um, sometimes we let our past plague us, but just know when we meet Christ, we're never the man we used to be, right? And maybe that's a, that's how we should treat other people too, um, with a little more respect and a little more grace on top of grace. I think everybody deserves it, regardless of what we think about them. People do change, and you are a new creation too. The Bible says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And I just love this story because it's that story of what God did for us, right? He saw more potential in us than we ever saw in ourselves. And he said, today, you are no longer a slave, no longer a slave to the person you used to be, no longer a slave to your old habits, no longer a slave to your old life, no longer a slave to your old mentality, what you thought you were and what you thought you had to do and how life should have been. Now you are free from that because I have never called you a slave, but now I want you to understand that you're actually a brother, right? That's beautiful. That's, that's beautiful. That should change everything about how you see yourself and the people around you. Um, I think our motto in life should be, let everybody know how much Jesus loves them. That's all the gospel really is. The good news that your life has been chain, changed forever. The Apostle Paul writes this as a man in prison, but he's more free than most of us will ever be. And I hope you get free today knowing that the gospel is a redemption story for you too. God loves you. So do I. Stay safe and warm today, guys. I can't wait to see you again next week. God bless you.